Hey, how are we doing? It's Ben from EQL Networks and Security. Today, we're gonna to be comparing two of Dawa's t cameras against each other. You know, that five megapixel model and their eight megapixel 4K version. So these are both t 2.10. And if you can see here, looking at the boxes, can you tell the difference? Well, you can't. They're basically the same camera, except uh, with different resolutions. So we've already done individual reviews of these cameras. So you haven't seen those yet. Well, we recommend watching those first. We'll put those links to the videos in the description below. So if you've already seen those videos, then skip to this timestamp here on the screen to see what the comparisons are. If you're new to this channel, like what you see here, be sure to hit that subscribe button and give us a thumbs up. If you have any other questions or comments, don't be afraid to hit us up in that comment sections below. Now let's get right into this. So the part number for these cameras will be listed here because I can never remember the part numbers. So first up, let's take a look at the eight megapixel 4K version. You know, the build of this model is pretty much identical to the five megapixel. I'm gonna say it is identical apart from the insides, but most of these cameras are made out of metal, have built-in red and blue LEDs for um, deterring potential intruders, and also has that built-in white LED if there's no ambient light around to help illuminate the environment. So the cameras both have built-in two-way speakers to communicate with someone if they're nearby, and even potentially scare off intruders. So now let's compare some of the specs. So the eight megapixel version has a one 2.8 inch CMOS sensor and an aperture of 1.4. Compared to the five megapixel version, which is a one 2.7 inch sensor and an aperture of 1.0. So both of the cameras have a wide dynamic range of 120 decibels. So now let's take a field of view. So the eight megapixel field of, field of view in a 2.8 mil lens has a horizontal um, field of view of 170 degrees, a vertical of 56, and a diagonal of 12. While the five megapixel has a horizontal of 103, a vertical of 53, and a diagonal of 12. So many you get a slightly wider shot on that eight megapixel, say compared to the five. Now let's compare Dory specs. So for five megapixel, you can detect at 67, observe at 27 meters, recognize it at 13.5, and identify at 6.7. Now with the eight, you're able to detect at 87 meters, observe at 35, recognize at 17.5 and identify 8.8 .8 meters. So from these specs, you can see that eight megapixel in theory should capture more details. Both models are available in 2.8 and 3.6 mil versions. Now, to give you an idea, guys, an idea of how loud the alarm is of both these cameras, we basically use an app to measure the decibel levels when standing about half a meter away from the camera. So the alarm is basically the same on both models. And just to clarify, this isn't an accurate depiction of how loud the alarm or the speaker is on this camera. It's just to give you guys an idea and a frame of reference. So once again, both of these cameras are part of the WizSense series and WizSense basically is engineered with advanced AI chips and has these deep learning algorithms to assist them identifying humans and vehicles. So these cameras are also sometimes referred to as t cameras, which stands for three in one because of their ability to see color 24 seven, and use you know, advanced AI chips to help identify objects such as vehicles and, and humans. And has that active deterrence feature such as your red and blue flashing lights and then that the speaker that can communicate through. So enough of this talking, let's go see how these cameras perform against each other. So let's go. So what we'll do is we'll take a look at the eight megapixel first. What you can see, it's a really sharp image. Colors are really crisp and clear, very wide angle field of view. So now when we look at the five, you can see it's Still that same wide field of view, but it looks a bit squashed. Like it's almost a little bit more fishy eye type scenario. Um, but you know, colors are still crisp. You know, everything's still sharp um, in comparison. So we'll do a side by side comparison here. Uh, and then you can see from the eights on the left and the five megapixels on the right, um, you can see the difference here. Like the eight megapixel, even though it's got that wider field of view, it's actually zoomed in a little bit more, say compared to the five megapixel but both images are still, you know, really good. And as you expect, eight megapixel is that sharp, bit sharper uh, compared to the five. So we'll do a walk test here uh, and I'm probably about eight meters away. And if we freeze it there, uh, you can clearly see colors, you know, features and everything at that distance there. So the eight, as you expect, like I said, it's just that little bit sharper um, compared to that five megapixel. So on the next test, they'll actually come up uh, a bit closer, probably about four meters away from the camera. And then when we come up to it and then we stop it probably about there, um, you can clearly see both sides, 
you know, make out facial features. The lettering on the jumper is probably that tad sharper on the eighth, but you can still clearly make out. Colors are still good. Facial features are both recognizable on both cameras here. What we'll do now is we'll zoom in on the car on the left. Uh, and from that, you can see here, even though the eight megapixel is that little bit closer in comparison, uh, you can still see and clearly make out both number plates on both uh, the eight and the five. Now we'll zoom into this sign, probably about 20 meters away. Uh, once again, you can see when you zoom in, you get a lot more detail or it looks better on the eight. You can actually clearly make it out. You can still make it out on the five megapixel as well. Uh, but overall, um, both cameras are performing uh, pretty well at that distance. We'll just zoom in on the car on the right. Uh, and same thing, once again, the eight, you can see the number plate definition of the characters a little bit sharper, but you can still clearly make out the layering on that five megapixel. And then what we'll do now is we'll zoom into the tree line. So it's probably about 35 meters away. And you can see the eight megapixel really isn't giving you any more detail or any more sharpness at that particular distance, say compared to the five. Now what we'll do is we'll jump into a, a nighttime shot. So on this particular shot, there is no IR, no white light on on this camera. This is purely uh, the camera set to basically just pick up the ambient light that's surrounded around. And you can see from the picture, it is a really good picture. Um, you, know, you can even make out numbering and letters on the number plates here without even zooming in, but we'll get into that. And then what we'll do is we'll have a look at the five megapixel. Once again, uh, you know, no other lighting around apart from what's in the surrounding areas. And you can clearly see like, you know, colors probably seemed a little bit better um, when we're going to the next comparison, but overall this picture still is pretty good. And then what we'll do here is you can see here from the eight and the five, the difference between the two. So, you know, the colors probably on the eight megapixel are probably, you know, a bit more truer, say compared to the five, but in both cases, it's still producing a great nighttime shot with only the basically the ambient light surrounding it, uh, picking that up. So what we'll do is we'll do our walk test. As you can see when you do the walk test, both cameras are ghosting here. So please note these cameras are straight out of the box settings. You can actually probably improve that by increasing the shutter speed here, but we always test all our cameras straight out of the box to give you an indication of what to expect. But you're not gonna be able to make out anything at that distance. Like it's just pretty much a blur, basically be able to pick up colors and stuff, um, but that's about it. Now, next shot will come up to about four meters from the camera. And then if we freeze it there, so you can see in this particular case, you're not really getting any true identification features out of it, but you can make out colors and so forth. Uh, we've probably just got the wrong frame on the eight, but it's just that little bit blurry compared to say the five. But overall, you know, to be able to identify colors and, and so forth is what these cameras are truly are about. So what we'll do now is we'll zoom into the left here. Um, so you can see here that when we look at uh, the eight megapixel, you know, it is a bit sharper. Like you can actually make out and define the letters compared to say the camera on the left, which is the five, on the right, sorry, the camera on the right, which is the five megapixel. You know, the lettering still isn't that sharp, um, but you can still make out what the, the numbers and the letters are on that car. And if we go over to the, the car on the right, the van, you can see here that, you know, on the eight, like the numbering just is that bit sharper, which is what you should kind of expect uh, compared to the five. But overall, you still be able to see what those letters are. And then we go to that sign in the middle, which is about 20 meters away. Can't make out any details whatsoever uh, at that distance apart from colors. And then the tree line, same thing, not going to make anything out at that distance. Funny enough here, the five megapixel is showing a bit better color, uh, say compared to the eight. Now what we'll do is actually turn on the white light uh, from the cameras. Um, so this basically light comes on and basically floods the area if you've got no ambient light around. Uh, and then what you can see here is that uh, on the eight megapixel, uh, 
you've got you know everything's kind of reflecting everything's a bit brighter uh, especially in the in the you know closer towards the camera and then if we look at the five you see here once again it's actually starting to throw a lot more light towards the back um towards the back there past the cars that's how bright these lights are they're quite incredible for these little leds um but overall you can start to see now number plates are starting to get reflected and you can't make out any identifying letters on that and then we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison and you can see the difference to be honest with you the five megapixel is actually looking a lot brighter there's a bit more detail in the shot uh, you can actually see a bit more of the background uh, and trees and definitions and so forth. And it is that little bit wider as a view, but number plates here are just being, you know, reflected back and just being blurred out just because of that white light. Now we'll do a walk test here. So you can see ghosting has improved a little bit. Um, and if we freeze it there, you can basically once again, just purely make out colors, uh, what there is and who's there but you wouldn't be able to make out any identifying features now what we'll do is we'll come up to a close upper close upper close up warp test and if we freeze it there so you can once again you can start to see on a still image the 8 megapixel is looking a bit better like the numbering and the letters on the jumper are actually a bit more clearer uh, facial features are a bit better. And then compared to the camera, the five megapixels getting a little bit more washed out from the white light. Um, but overall, you can still clearly make out colors and, uh, and so forth. The blacks probably on the eight megapixel are probably a, a better indication of what the jumper actually is. But you still be able to define um, colors in that particular instance. Now what we'll do is we'll zoom into the cars and if we do a side-by-side -side comparison here, you can see number plates now are, are non-existent just because of that white light's being reflected back off. In saying that though, if the camera's mounted up high, you might not get as much uh, reflection back off the number plate, but in this particular case, that's what's happening. Now this position's a bit interesting. So this is probably about, like I said, 20 meters away, um, but the eight megapixel, you actually are able starting to make out the numbers and the letters apart from the reflection you're able to capture a little bit more detail from the eight megapixel and then we'll finish off here we'll just look at the van on the right and once again can't make out the number plates at all due to the light being that white light reflecting off the number plates and then we'll just out of curiosity just jump into looking at the trees um, but you can see here just how much that bright light on the five megapixel is actually shining onto the trees. And it's probably giving you a better indication of what the colors are, say compared to the eight megapixel, which in this case, the trees look really black. So what's my thoughts on these cameras? You know, both cameras perform relatively well during the day with the eight megapixel camera providing a bit more clarity when needing to zoom in. However, during the night, if there's no ambient light source, you know, moving people and vehicles, as you saw, can be um, basically ghost or blur. You know, it doesn't also help that when the white LED is used, certain features of vehicles, a particular number plates, and even people can be washed out, just to due to how bright that LED is, which is also a good thing. But keep in mind that, you know, these settings are straight out of the box testing, so you might be able to get better results if the right settings are applied. That being said, is the 8 megapixel 4K really worth the extra dollars? Now, considering that the night point, nighttime performance um, is basically very similar with the five megapixel slot performing slightly better just because of its lower aperture. You know, the cameras barely share any visual difference during the day, except for maybe slight differences in color, sharpness and aspect ratio. So in my opinion, you're probably better off going with the five megapixel and using that extra money to invest in some extra storage. You know, that doesn't mean that the eight megapixel is a bad camera. It is a really good camera. And if you need him to capture, you know, a wider field of view, you also have that advantage of having, you know, slightly clearer images. And when you need to, you're able to zoom in that slightly touch better. However, keep in mind that recording in high resolutions mean that you also need to invest in the appropriate infrastructure to basically accommodate that bandwidth and extra storage required for 4K video. So on that note, that's it for this video. If you found this video informative, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. And while you're at it, hit us up in the comment sections below for any questions you may have. At EQL, we're always here to help and support your business.